unemployed in a foreign country risking deportation. I made the monumental decision to teach myself programming and pursue a career as a software engineer. Since becoming a remote software engineer, my life has been totally transformed and best of all, it was totally free and it only took me six months. So it all began when I was extremely unhappy in my previous role. I was in a foreign country on an employer specific work permit, which meant losing this job meant losing my income source. And should I burn through my savings, I would have to leave the country. Now this was an outcome I really didn't want. I was legitimately hand on heart considering buying a lawnmower so that I could mow lawns for cash just to prevent that eventuality. As I was considering this prospect, I remembered a story I had heard once about a 17 year old who had got himself a job as a software engineer without getting a qualification and he hadn't even finished school. I had the thought to go and check on the internet and you know, lo and behold, I was able to confirm that a few people had had similar experiences and knowing I had enough money at this time to support myself for six months worth of frugal unemployment, I decided to teach myself to code and hopefully become a software engineer. Now, pragmatic as I like to think I am, there were three massive questions I knew I would have to answer in order to manifest my new software engineering career. Number one was, what do I need to know? Number two is, where is the most optimal place to learn this material? And number three is, what non-programming related things can I do to contribute to my success? Answering this last question was absolutely huge and it's actually what I attribute most of my success to. However, we will touch more on that later. First, we have to start off focusing on the first question. And my first point of call was to contact, reach out to a friend of mine who I knew who was a software engineer and just ask for as much assistance as he could give me on, you know, where do I start in answering my first question. His response was to recommend me towards HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as my foundation and entry into programming. And I think this was absolutely brilliant advice and I would totally recommend it to anybody considering starting the same journey. My friend also recommended me some re resources and together we crafted a bit of a roadmap that I could follow after I had picked up the basics. This was pretty generic but it's always nice to have some direction and guidance and you can actually see a digital version of this roadmap and link to this is in the description should you want to have a look at that. But the long and short of it was after you've picked up the JavaScript, HTML and CSS you're definitely heading towards a JavaScript framework that's typically React, so many jobs for React and after that maybe investigating full stack development with a server framework work, put together a server and maybe some databases. A little bit of quick research on my own end, you know, I went out and looked at all the jobs that I would love to have. 90% of them were asking for things that we had included in our roadmap. So this gave me a lot of confidence to stick to my guns and let this roadmap be my holy Bible. My friend's final piece of advice for me at the beginning was to make sure I eventually ended up with a portfolio with a few projects in it as this was apparently going to be huge for landing my job. So just like that, I had the answer to my first question done. I had my glorious roadmap. However, question one was actually the easiest question to answer, but I still had to figure out how was I going to learn it? Where is the optimal place to start? And I hadn't even had an opportunity to think about my last question. The first place I started to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript was with freecocamp.org. Now this is a brilliant resource. And if anyone was ever asking me, I would just say, don't even think about it. Go to Free Code Camp and do their JavaScript and responsive web design certificates. Thousand percent interactive environment, lots of support, answers to all of your questions, and the progression difficulty is absolutely perfect to gradually step you through the material. So I hacked away at these two certificates for probably two to three weeks each, four to six hours of coding a day, and they got me to a level where I could, you know, be in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, look at someone else's code, and just not be totally lost. So that was amazing. At this point, I had done the certificates and I wanted to actually code something. So I put together my first portfolio with some really tragic little projects that I put together from the curriculums, the certificates. And the portfolio was a YouTube tutorial by none other than our homeboy, Kevin Powell CSS. It just used HTML and CSS, super simple. 
got to the end of the tutorial and then decided I'd make it a bit of me, spruced it up, added some personal flair, retrospectively it was destructive, it looked absolutely atrocious, but that's just part of the learning journey. And with this portfolio, I threw out a few job applications, got rejected like nothing else, and it was those very rejections that propelled me into React, learning React, because I knew I needed more to prove my worth to these organizations. Now at this point, I was feeling pretty comfortable, you know, being in code bases, and so I decided to learn React from YouTube tutorials. This really worked for me. I did typically two pretty basic tutorials. To get a reasonable handle of it, I by no means could go and code a React application by myself, but the intention here was to get familiar with React so that I could actually do a Mern Stack project tutorial where Mern stands for MongoDB, React, Node, and Express. And this is a full stack project where Express and Node are your server frameworks, React is your front-end JavaScript framework. And if you can kind of get the Mern stack under your belt, this for me was monumental and actually starting to get some interview responses and all that good stuff and feel like I was making progress. So I went through my Mern stack tutorial and then I absolutely gutted the project. I commented everything that was important, notes from the tutor so that I had them, and then I left the skeleton of the project, left all the core CRUD operations, and I morphed it into my own project which for me was huge because you know I could finally do something that I wanted and that just blew my motivation out of the water. I was so keen on it. I couldn't stop programming my own little programs. And this was huge for me for just feeling comfortable in a code base and just breaking that barrier of having to watch someone else do it to me being able to do it independently. So I did two of these projects, pretty similar, added them both to my portfolio. They took probably a weekend or two to do the React tutorials and then another two weeks or so per project to have them ready in my portfolio. And I went back to the job applications and I still wasn't having enough success and this is where question three what non-programming related things can I do to improve my success came in absolute clutch and just made a night and day difference to get some interviews to get some responses and to actually get some job offers so I did some research on what people were talking about doing to land their developer jobs and we were talking like open sourcing, communicating with people on Twitter, getting into the tech communities. And those two solutions just really didn't vibe with me. But the part that I found absolutely brilliant was networking on LinkedIn. For every job application I would submit, I would message a few people in the organization, someone in a software development role, the hiring manager, maybe even the CEO and just introduce myself, say that I'd love to be a part of the team, would be super keen to have an informational interview. And obviously a lot of these people totally rejected me, but some of them actually loved the initiative to the point where I got job offers literally by just cutting the line, getting some face-to-face -face time with these people. And if they like you, that is massive. At the end of the day, if you can code, you can code, you can prove that with your portfolio of projects. And they liked my personality, they wanted me as part of their team, that was enough to do it. Now the compliment to this is communication. You need to kiss ass in the most authentic and genuine way possible. And the way that I found really successful was to embrace a persona of not being the best programmer, but instead the best learner. I showed independent learning, critical thinking, I was open to feedback, I was very grateful for any opportunities. I actually initially got rejected from the job that I ended up taking because they had already filled the spot. However, the company went out of their way to create a new role specifically for me because they just really jammed the way that I communicated. Even in the rejection that I initially got, I was very grateful for the opportunity and they were just like, you know what, we like you. We want you, you come be part of our team. And that was it. Six months, projects, learn some coding, and it has just been absolutely brilliant. I would recommend it to anybody. Programming is the best creative outlet. You can build whatever you want. I work remote, I love my job, I love the people I work with, and I hope you can have the very same success that I have. The intention of this channel in the first place was to give everyone the resources I wish that I had on my journey. And if you have enjoyed this video, be super appreciated if you could leave a like and subscribe. Love that support. And finally, check the description for some useful links that might help get you started today. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.